It's about to go down. It's your boy, Carlos Inspire, with the greatest Preston Miles in the house. Ladies and gentlemen, we will be here for another blessing episode of the Carlos Inspire show. And you guys know the drill. We are not here to motivate you, baby. We are here to inspire you because motivation is both. <laughs> motivation is bull crap. We are here to inspire you. We are here to speak some life into you so that we can fill your cup during this pandemic. And ladies and gentlemen, you guys are in for a treat today, but ladies and gentlemen. I got a brother over here that I love and respect, amazing, incredible human being. I read his book a few years back and I was like, damn. That's that. That's a brother. That's one of the apostles. And for my non-religious friends in the house, that's one of their dangers, you know. And uh, I was like, I gotta interview him and having him on the show. And let me let me tell you guys something about this brother over here, ladies and gentlemen. He is a conscious businessman, family man, experiential speaker, author of Love Louder, and I highly recommend. And thirty-three ways to amplify your life. Published by Simon & Schuster, founder of Kaboom Coaching, co-founder of The Bridge Method, and badass messenger of love. Preston Miles is a force to be reckoned with on personal growth scene. Leading the cutting edge workshops all over the world with his equally powerful wife, Alexi Panos, winning awards like the Millennium Mentor of the Year, gracing the cover of Inspire Coach Magazine. Preston Smiles is on fire, ladies and gentlemen, like his huge personality. Mr. Smiles has been featured on some of the biggest podcasts and media platforms in the world, such as Impact Theory, my brother Tom Bilou, and the School of Greatness, my brother Louis House, along with touching the hearts of souls and thousands of people daily through his provocative social media videos and writings, as Jack Kimfield and Michael Beckwith have said, Preston is unstoppable. My brother Preston, how are you, my friend? <laughs> oh, let's get it. <laughs> Carlos, I am beautiful, man. I'm beautiful. Just like my soul and your soul and all of life, you know, just in man, the flow. Oh, you have, oh my God, I'm just so happy, brother. And, and, and you know, I've been preaching, man, this past couple of, you know, months and telling everybody, man, all my friends, all my clients, just to drop it, massive value. Because right now, you know, the world need more leaders like you and myself mm -hmm. to keep stepping the game up. And like you, just like myself, we've been mm -hmm. doing daily masterminds and interviews and summits and speaking life into everybody. And this is gonna be great, my brother. I have some great questions here for you, my friend, and we're gonna get to it. And wow, my brother, very happy that you are here. So here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go with, with, with one of them that, that I love this question. You are in your deathbed. What is what it would be your last message to this world, my friend? Let's reverse engineer. Normally people mm -hmm. like to ask that end. I wanna reverse engineer it. And then we're gonna go deep. Mm. You know, I think my last message, if I'm on my deathbed and, and I have it the way I want it, uh, my wife is next to me. Um, and I have one ha hand on her, on her ass. So I'm holding her ass and, and uh, she's sort of laying in my arm and we're both smiling and our kids and grandkids are all around us and they're smiling. And um, I, would, I would probably say to them and uh, anybody else listening that uh, not to be afraid that, that life is, is to be lived and, and that there is no opposite to life. There's nothing opposite to it. There's only transmutation. And so um, while we have this confirmation number called our heart and our breath and this now moment to uh, amplify their love so that they can automatically amplify their lives because everything is steeped in that one thing. I, I, I remind people all the time that, and this is just my opinion, love, Love is all there is, was, and ever will be. That's included in a pandemic. There's still only love here. That's including when my um, uh, ancestors were on boats coming from Africa over to America. Love was still all there is, was, and ever will be. Now, some people choose 
things that um, don't feel good. They choose certain frequencies, but breath, air, life. And, and, and I know you and I could probably go back and forth about this. I am not a religious man. However, I do believe in, in, in spirituality and God. Yes. And so my belief is that God is only and always saying yes. In the Bible, it says, it is done unto you as you believe. And now the as part, right? We, we skip out. We, we miss sometimes the as. As you believe. So if I'm believing a certain thing, then, then uh, as, as they say also in the Bible, um, knock and, and the door shall be answered to you, right? Seek and you shall find, right? At every point of the way, it's up to me. It's up to me, right? And so um, I would just remind everybody that love is all there is and that there's no way to mess this thing up because all roads lead to the same place, which is back to the soul. We're threefold beings, body, mind, and soul. But the soul is the one that really runs the show when it's all said and done. And so let's start with that. Say it again, brother. Look what he said. <laughs> the show is the only one. The soul runs the show, beautiful people. Look yes, at what he's dropping some love because we're about to love louder. <laughs> it's about to go down. It's Preston Miles in the house. Man, and Preston, brother, you know, I, I, I do. What a beautiful picture, brother. You know what I mean? I literally saw myself right there, man, watching you mm. and your spouse and your grandkids. Mm. You know, I, I'm, I'm crazy, you know. I'm surrounded by a, board, by a lot of, like, older people, very wealthy people, right? Mm -hmm. And they have all these crazy rituals. You know, so I'm all, and once I got, I review my eulogy. Mm. And, you know, and I review it. And I, and I read it and I write it and I journal about it. So I was, like, there watching you. And, they, and I felt the love. Mm. And what a beautiful answer to that question. That's why I like to start, because I like to reverse engineer stuff. And, you, you know, yeah. you guys know me, beautiful people. I do crazy stuff. You know, like I always preach, right? You must do what others don't, can't, and won't. And, you know, I love this brother here because just like me, myself, you know, we were, we, we self-made. We come mm -hmm. from nothing. You guys know my story, right? Father died in a car explosion. His stepfather was murdered. I was tortured and abused as a kid in Brazil. You know, we seen the devil in the eyes quite a few times. But as what I always say, you are not the person that you see in the mirror. You are not defined. You know, I'm glad that you're so glad that you talk about the Bible because most people, as you know, my brother, they walk by sight and not mm -hmm. by faith. Mm -hmm. And you know what I mean? You gotta walk by faith, mm -hmm. not by sight. Know what is in front of you, ladies and gentlemen. But now that we have all this crap in front of us, here's a question, Preston, that when I was a little kid, I used to sell bread on the streets to help mm -hmm. my widow mom. And I was, after I was done selling, I would go to the local business owners that were successful. People like yourself. But imagine, you would run a supermarket or you have your meat or you have your, you know. And I would go, hello, my friend Preston. How are you doing? Imagine, fat boy, chubby. I'm 6'5", 320 pounds. I've always been big and tall and fat, you know. So I would go there and I go, hello, Mr. Preston. Let's say you run like a supermarket. And I go, Mr. Preston, you know, what is three mistakes that you would avoid doing to be a way you are right now in this stage of your life? Because you are very successful, Preston. What is somebody right now that they want to have, like, you know, that, that bestseller book? They want to have that extraordinary mm -hmm. quality of relationship that you have. You're an amazing father and human being and leader and mentor. And what is three mistakes that, 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 that you could, um, that you would avoid doing, Preston, on, on the way up, you know what I mean, to become who you become today, that you could share with the audience? Yeah, um, that's an easy one for me. Um, and and I, I remind people and myself of this all the time. Um, I think the only mistake you can make is trying not to make mistakes. Um, those who, who um, are successful, and whatever they deem it to be, um, get there by falling, by failing, by, by, by messing up, by going too far. And so I'm, I'm constantly reminding anybody who comes into my space and myself all the time that, you know, a lot of this stuff that we hold on to is illusion, yeah. right? It's smoke and mirrors. Yeah. Yes, yes, I'm a self-prayed millionaire and I'm bigger than the money. Yeah. The money's extra. It's a cherry on top. 
And, and oftentimes, even, you know, in, in, in our culture, a lot of times we're, we're taught from a very early age, from the get up, that you, what do you want to be when you grow up? And that assumes that there's one thing that you're going to land on. And this is one of the things that gets people in, in trouble all the time is they go, oh, well, I got to figure out my one thing that I'm going to be for the rest of my life. And I like to uh, sort of put it like this. We all have only one purpose and we have many missions and we have, we have different visions for how that life and how, how our life will manifest. But we all have one purpose and that's to reflect and reveal to be the living embodiment of God's love. Now, everything else outside of reflecting in the only unique way that we can of God's love, outside of that, we have missions, little mini missions. And sometimes in order to complete the mission, you need to go through some breakdowns and some breakups and some things that don't feel so good, right? Carlos, you couldn't be standing here today without some of the things that happened to through and for you. And so um, somebody trying to avoid mistakes, that would be the first issue right there. Get in the game and play. Yes. You know, people ask me all the time, what would you tell your younger self? I'd say, make more mistakes. Yes. Go too far. Go find out who, what you're made of. I love it. I love it. You made me think about something over here that you say in the book. I took some notes over here to ask you about Ooh. this question. and. You say, hold up, hold up, was something very, very powerful. You're talking about the, the, the hashtag love challenge, and then you're talking about a situation or a person that you're having a hard time with, and then by, by shifting, right, mm -hmm. into the neutral zone. Yes. And then, but you also were talking about, you know, the, the going all in. Yes. You know, going all in. And, you know, if, let's say, for example, here's a good question about that, about that topic, about going all in, or getting off the fence and going all in. You talk about that in the book. And by the way, guys, love Laura, highly recommend, amazing stuff in there. But let's say, knowing all that you know, Preston, mm -hmm. you know, um, let's say all, all that you know, but without having the cash, mm -hmm. because a lot of people say, oh, I don't have the money, okay, great. It's yeah. never the money, you and I know that. It's, yeah. like, it's just like so many things we can do that we can serve and we can add value. Yep. What would be your advice for somebody right now that is on the fence, they are procrastinating, you know what I mean? It's like sometimes, they, like you talk about this, like they're they driving, they're in traffic, they're in the car. Why not use that time to make those phone calls yep. that they've been procrastinating making? So, and, and I'm quoting this from the book, guys, so that's how you know that I read it. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and what would be that advice you know, that version, the definition of you person for somebody right now, if you need to go all in right now, let's yep. say God frozen your bank accounts, all the cash, mm -hmm. and you have three beautiful children, your amazing wife, you guys have your foundation, awesome yep. overseas, and we'll talk about that. What would, what would you do to go all in, like the next 30 days, bro, to be able to start creating that momentum? What is that advice that you could give for someone listening to us here? And I also have kids that listen to me here from yeah. other countries, because I travel throughout the world into villages, and I translate a lot of things to the little children. What would be your advice for somebody right now that doesn't have the cash, they are procrastinating, that they, they, they are listening and watching the news too much? What would be yeah. that? So I'd say this, there's a couple things. One, um, to hold the vision and not the circumstances. Mm. A lot of times we focus so much on the circumstances that we miss where we're actually headed. And so out the gate, I would remind myself of, of my why and, and my what. And I, I say this quite often, sometimes you need to be knee deep in the why and the what for the how to reveal itself. A lot of people don't wanna start until they understand the how, but that's the, that's the issue. I have people that come to me and say, Preston, how do I become? How do I become rich? How do I become this? How do I become a coach? How do I become this? And I say, it's not a, mess, a matter or a conversation about becoming. It's about revealing. It's about revealing who and what I always have been. My unique soul signature, the thing that only I can give to the world. And so there are four stages of consciousness, right? And I just want to put this in here so people understand where, what we're talking about here. To me, which is victim consciousness. This is the world is happening to me. I'm at the effect of everything. Oh, they froze my bank accounts. Oh, I lost my job. Oh, this happened to me, to me, to me. Second stage, by me. 
right? This is when we get into our Gary V, Hustle Hard, Tony Robbins, um, Grant Cardone, buy me, right? I create my own reality, let's get it, right? I'll do my push-ups, let's go, right? That's second stage. Third stage, through me. This is when we become a vessel. This is when we say, use me, spirit. Use me, God. Use me, Krishna. Use me, Jesus. How can I be a vessel for your love? Fourth stage, as me. When we go into that as me state, that's Christ conscious, that's the Buddha nature. That is, there is nothing other than God, right? And now, now understanding that, right? Because distinctions, we are linguistic beings. We are four, there are four, uh, let's say, aspects of what it means to be human, right? So we are uh, biological beings, right? There's a lot of things happening in my body right now. We are social and historical beings, which means we were born into beliefs and interpretations, born into beliefs and interpretations, right? Money doesn't grow on trees. Uh, money's the root of all evil. Fill in the blank, there's a million, right? Third stage, we are linguistic beings, which means we build worlds with our language. The, 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 the moment we understand and have distinctions linguistically, we open up new opportunities. We, we literally build worlds with distinctions. And then the fourth aspect of what it means to be human is we are quantum beings, right? There's the metaphysical aspect of us, which is beyond skin suits and black and brown and Brazilian and African and all those things. It's, it's spirit, right? Made in the spiritual image and likeness of the most high. That is, I'm, I'm God's twin, right, in spirit. And so understanding those two things, four stages of consciousness and the four aspects of what it means to be human, I would instantly go into how can I be used in this moment, right? And, and while being used, I'll take a little bit of that by me energy and, and go where my ego doesn't want me to go. And the first place I would go is community. Most people never actually ask for help. They're too prideful and they're too afraid. You got people around you right now, whoever's listening, whoever's watching, and there's people in your space right now who could support you. There's people who know people who know people who could support you, but you got to ask. You got to get out of your own way and stop trying to control it and get out of your pride and ego and say, I am a no matter what for my success. I am a no matter what for me to show up for this planet. I am a no matter what. That, that's what I would do. Drop it. Look at that little gentleman. I told you. <laughs> I'm telling you, we got one of their apostles in the house. It's about to go down. I tell you guys, we only have amazing people. You know, I've been interviewing some great people on my podcast mm -hmm. now. The, the great, the, the Frank Shankers of the world and the Sharon Lecter. This gentleman over here, he's the youngest one, but he's like <laughs> old soul brother here. I already knew it. You guys know me. I surround myself with a lot of old soul because we become the reflection. Mm. And he touched point over here on something amazing, ladies and gentlemen. I was listening. I even took some notes, you know? And, and guys, just think about it, right? What he's saying over here, some of the things that, you know, you guys hear me saying something similar, which is the transcendence piece. Yes. It's where we are one. This is not about Preston or Carlos or you or your brand or your father's beautiful people. It's about all of us, the community coming one. From this place, mm. above oneself, the transcendence piece. Yes, yes. Ladies and gentlemen, you cannot go wrong. From the transcendence place, what Preston just talked about here, like, you know, being connected. Think about it. Most people, Preston, you know, it's like, we don't even go there. You know what I mean? Like, imagine living and operating and breathing from that place before yep. you get over here on this interview, before Preston and I go into a stage. You know, we win the game before we get in the game because when we go there, we like ready to bring it. We are ready to, so we want to transfer that energy. We want you to take us home. We want you to talk about us at the dinner table and tell your children and your employees and your friends because we don't go with the intent. Oh my God, you know, how many followers you have or, or, or how many people going to be on the room and think about, oh, if I help the 1%, I'll make, you know, 100,000 today and all this BS. When you go with that intent, you're already lost. Mm -hmm. You're already lost for people like Preston and myself. Yep. That show up to blow up no matter what. Yep. And like he said something beautiful earlier, we're not gonna take the money. 
the money is just there. It's an instrument. The moment that you see, the moment that I stopped focusing on money, that's when I, the moment that I let it go, that the little boy, they used to sell bread, making 50 cents a day, hustle the streets. I used to train criminals out of prison to go door to door, you know, making a grand two, three grand here and there. And it's like, the moment that I stop worrying about money, money starts flowing. Because you, I connected to what he just described, being that being, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Being connected to, to that, that spiritual version of yourself. I'm yeah. telling you, ladies and gentlemen, this is deep. I'm telling I'm really hoping you guys are taking note and are enjoying this as much as That's I am. Right. I told you guys it's going to be a fire up, you know? And, and, and okay, let me see what I'm going to go from here because I think you know, another great thing, here, here's something that I think is going to serve everybody listening to us. You know, you're extremely successful, my brother, in all the buckets of your life. You know what I mean? When we compare it to, like, the remaining of the planet, right? What are some of the tools, Preston, that, that you use to be, you know, constantly being the best version of yourself? What are some of the things that you could share, you know what I mean, that, that somebody listening to us could use, some of the tools that make you successful? If you could share one or two, you know, yeah. for my audience, I would appreciate it, brother. Uh, well, one is, um, I remind myself all the time, uh, and this comes from conversations with God. I read this book maybe eight years ago and there was a line that popped off the page and I, I, I haven't forgot it ever since. I think about it every day. And the line is, you cannot have what you want, but you may experience what you have. And I remember reading that and just going, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. I can't have what I want, but I can experience what I have. And then it clicked for me. It clicked for me that, that what God was talking about in this particular book was a, a matter of frequency, that everything is vibrating. And that when I'm vibrating from the frequency of gratitude, when I'm vibrating from the frequency of joy, celebration, harmony, curiosity, then I get to have more of that. And I become a vibrational match for the things that I previously wanted, right? Because going back to it, God, Buddha, Allah, Krishna, Jesus, whatever name is most potent for you, in my opinion, is a yes button. It, it only has yes written in it. There's no other thing. And so, but how we ask is in our beingness. And so, number one, I always stay, go back to frequency. What, what am I experiencing right now? Then. Um, there's something called the, the four pillars of integrity, right? And integrity, when you break that word down, means integer, which, which is the, the root word for whole or whole number. So to be whole is to be congruent and in alignment. Congruency says that what I say on the outside, I am living when nobody else is watching, right? My message and who I be when nobody else is around is is congruent. Alignment is when I'm in alignment with my, let's call it mission on the planet. And so the four pillars are number one, take 100% responsibility. This is the thing that a lot of people never want to do. It's their mom, it's their dad, it's the system, it's the white man, it's the president, it's the country, it's something, but they're not taking 100% responsibility. And so the first place I would go is back there. It's like, okay, how did I cause, create, or allow, or perpetuate? Cause, create, allow, or perpetuate what I'm experiencing right now. I'm just going to let that stand for one second. How did I, because you, as you know this, you work with Tony, powerful questions, powerful answers. How did I cause, allow, create, or perpetuate what I'm currently experiencing? When I have the answer to that, then I have the answer to how not to. Because it's back on me and not them. If it's them, they have my power. The government, the white man, the, the X, Y, and Z, the, everything has my power if it's them. When I point that finger back in and say, how did I cause it? How did I allow it? How did I create it? How did I perpetuate it? I instantly have my power back. Boom. Integrity. Okay, that's number one. Number two is I speak authentically. Right? A lot of people don't, don't actually speak their truth. And one of the things I, I remind people all the time, and I say this, is speak what you seek until you see what you said. Right? Speak it into existence. There is power with the tongue. We are linguistic beings. So we speak what we seek 
until we see what we said and then we speak something else into existence. Why? Because we're prophesying. Even if it's not true with a capital T, it's still a truth inside of your beingness because everything that has ever existed is already on this planet and, and all it's doing is coagulating and finding its way to you. But it doesn't find its way to you until you're in alignment with it. Remember, threefold beings, body, mind, and soul. When all three of those are aligned, we are at our most powerful. Number three is I feel my feelings all the way through. A lot of people have something happen to them or for them and they, they rationalize, right? I know people, self-included, who've had um, really terrible things happen, sexually, as kids, just terrible stuff, right? People who go through breakups, people who get cut off on the freeway, let alone, you know, have something go wrong and they don't allow themselves to feel anger, sadness, joy, fear, sexual feelings. There's five core emotions, by the way, and I just named all five. I, I allow my feelings to complete themselves. So I, am, I match my experience with a physical expression and a verbal expression. And those two things, just like animals in the wild, gives me an opportunity to somatically release what has been trapped or stuck in my body. I hope somebody is hearing this because this is deep as hell if you really let it land, okay? So I allow that not to stick to me because the body is a living library. There are three centers of intelligence, head, heart, gut, right? And the body stores everything we've ever been through. So that, number four, this is the last one. I know I'm going off right now. There's a lot. There's no, a lot of information. Going. I told you. I already <laughs> told you last time. We're going to keep it going here. No, I'm telling you. Okay. It, they, it's anointed. This yes. is an anointed podcast. The yes, world sir. needs this right now, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, taking sir. notes. Writing is the doing part of taking. Drop yes. it like it's hot, my brother. Let's get it. Let's get it. Uh, number four is, and this is the fourth pillar of integrity, and it is keeping my agreements. Uh, a lot of people... Um, and, and those are agreements with myself as well. If I say I'm going to be there at nine and I show up at 930, then I need to clean that agreement up because I said nine. If I said I'm going to show up, right, you know, you, you, you asked me to get on here at 115. I messaged you and said, hey, I need five more minutes because I'm going to go use the restroom, yeah. right? Keeping my agreements, being my word at, at all cost or renegotiating my word making sure that I don't have any energetic cords or things that are blocking my blessings because everything is circulating. And the only way we block them is by holding or attaching to things that no longer serve us. Hurrah! <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm telling you guys. And you guys see, he's what I love about pressure, man. And uh, it's just like, brother, I need, you know, I'm telling you, it's like the little things, guys, that simple text message mm -hmm. that he sent, being there on time. You guys know me. I'm military. I'm old school, right? Mm -hmm. 330 pounds, 6'5". <laughs> when you guys are not on time, I get on you, you know, because you guys know how it is. I want to make sure that that behavior doesn't repeat in other areas of your life. And whenever you guys see me coming at you, you know, my clients, you know how we do it. You know what I mean? It's because, you know what I mean? It's like, I want to see you win. You guys know my mission is make poverty history. Yes. It's not make money. It's not get a, an Oscar trophy. None of that shit. It's eradicate hunger. It's make poverty history. It's eliminate sex trafficking. It's making yes. sure little boys and little girls are not kidnapped to becoming war terrorists. Yep. You don't do that by focus on the art and not playing full out. Being on the top of your game, being congruent, be able when we turn off this camera over here, you are incongruent with who you are. Mm -hmm. Many people out there, you know what I mean? You drop the so much you know because they turn off the camera and they're becoming a different being. I <laughs> talk to so many videographers, bro, out there, or I, you know, or I go being, I go film, you know, in somebody's studio and they're like, Dale Carlos, you are on fire. This thing is lit. Mm -hmm. We have people that come over here, bro, and they, they're on camera and they're all nice and the camera's off. They're such arrogant and they jerk and they like, no, and they're talking about the this, this shit that they, not to be like that. But they were not, they're treating the cameramen, they're treating yeah. the workers, they're treating the maid or the person that just gave them a bottle of water like shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, 
guys, you should eventually. It, 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 it's like you gotta, it's like you gotta rewire yep. some of that shit. You know what I mean? We need to reprogram some of those habits. Yep. And then it's like exactly what Preston, he taught you so many points over here, us keeping it real and allowing to be in this being because you are already born into greatness, beautiful people. You know, I was speaking earlier today, somebody who the heck robbed this shit out of you. Think about it. You were already born as a winner. You feel me? You're raising, you guys were, you make you say them both look stupid. You guys were fighting with 300 million others when you were conceived. And guess who won? You won. You, you were born a champion. Don't let society, the news, the TV, your priest, your spouse, nobody take this shit from you. You listen to this brother here. You listen to me. You keep coming back in here to this podcast and you share with the entire world and you heart it up and you follow us and you tag your employees here and your followers and your people because somebody out there needed to hear this today. Come on, Carlos, let me get a name, name on this day. You feel me? <laughs> yes, that, sir. That's no secret, guys. That's no secret. It's not like who Preston and I know or this secret. You guys know my best advice of all times? It's not for my billionaire friends and my celebrity friends. No, it's for my grandma. Mm -hmm. Treat everybody like you treat your grandma. And yes. don't forget to live every day with intention. Yes. And then everything else that Preston says. <laughs> yeah. Real talk. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Man, oh, we're going to keep it going. We still got another 15 here. <laughs> and if you have to go, you tell me. But this is anointed. This, you're like, you don't mess with the anointed. Mm -hmm. Dale, I'm telling you, hard that thing up. <laughs> I forget that we're doing an interview, but I'm also talking to different social medias here. But that's how we roll. We ain't going to edit a shit. We're going to keep it going. Yes, Damn. sir. Yes, sir. Damn, nah, bro. That's beautiful, man. I, I, I agree with you. You know, it, it, you know, you talk about something in your book, so beautiful, about that little girl. Mm. And it's wow, uh, related it's... to gratitude. Yeah. You know, yep. I mean, such a, you know, I wanted to, to, you know, what is, does gratitude mean for you? Because I always tell people around the world, Preston, it comes down to perspective mm -hmm. and gratitude. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? If we, before we engage in the outside forces that you were talking about, other people's agenda, other people's attitude, other people's bullshit, other people's stories, before they come in and take that greatness from us, it comes yeah. down to just self-reflection, perspective, and gratitude. And you have beautiful exercises about gratitude and a beautiful story. So, you know, if you could talk a little bit about what gratitude mm -hmm. means for you and, uh, and share a little bit of that story here with them without maybe not, you know, just drop it like this one. And I still want you guys to go read that book, I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> no, no worries, man. Um, yeah, I, I, I teach something called the three G's. So giving, growth, and gratitude. Um, and uh, I remind people that, because a lot of people say they just want to be happy. And I'm like, okay, well, I just want to remind you that happiness cannot be traveled to, owned, earned, worn, or consumed. It's a spiritual experience that comes from having a deep and abiding attitude of gratitude. Happiness is a byproduct from when we are actually filling our cups in such a way that there's so much overflow, right? And, and, and really the game is to not even be playing in the half empty or half full, but to just be so deeply grateful that you have a cup. And I find that every time I'm just in that space, just like, thank you God for this. Whatever this is, however this looks, whatever, wherever it is, no, it's not where it wants to be, but wow, this is awesome. In those moments, I instantly get a bigger cup. My cup expands. And so there's more to come into my cup and there's more overflow for everybody else. And so um, my wife has an organization called EPIC, which is, stands for Everyday People Initiating Change. And they build clean water wells in Tanzania, Africa, and other developing countries. And uh, we were there one year, and we decided to go to this orphanage and, and support. And on uh, the day before, we heard that there was a little girl in there named Upindo. Uh, and Upindo means love in Swahili. And they, uh, they said, 
you know, there's a girl here who has a rare uh, disease that basically her skin is like melting, like, like somebody's dropping acid on her. And if she goes in the sun, it just like collapses. And so she's wrapped up like a mummy um, and every part of her is wrapped up and they never, they don't let her go outside until after the sun goes down and all the kids and everybody's afraid of her. So there's only two nurses that, uh, or like people at the orphanage who will actually touch her and rewrap her bandages. And um, I remember we got there and uh, as we entered the room, I could smell the, her flesh uh, is just sort of falling off. And uh, we started to talk to her and I speak a little bit of Swahili, but they, they had a translator there. And uh, we brought her some journals and some pens because they said she liked to draw and stuff like that. And then um, one of the girls said, oh, we should sing a song. And we said, let's ask Opindo what she wants us to sing. And Opindo said, um, in Swahili, she said, uh, you know, uh, Baby Baby by Justin Bieber, basically. So we're singing, baby, 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 oh. And we're like going off. And she's smiling and so happy and just so grateful. Um, I think Opindo was nine, if I, if I remember correctly. It tops, she was 11, but between nine and 11. And... I, I remember when we left there, I was just so overwhelmed with gratitude for one, being able to meet her and experience and, and be around her. And two, you know, you just forget that. Um, and not this is about comparison, but you just forget that some people are literally born with things that make it a little more challenging to be on this planet. It's already challenging as a quote unquote regular able bodied person, but add on top of that uh, rare disease that there's no cause like and her parents she's at the orphanage because her parents abandoned her her mom and dad and and i get why they had they couldn't take care of her they were broke and poor and barely getting by and they have this little girl who can't be in the sun and so they dropped her off at this orphanage and um i just felt so much gratitude for a meeting her and and for all the other stuff and to make a long story short, uh, I believe it was a year later, she died in that room. Um, and uh, you know, I was happy for her. I was happy that she got to you know, take another lap in a different way. You know, uh, it's my belief that um, energy can never be born and therefore never die. And I've seen people die bloody deaths. I've held people with their brains splattered on the ground and I know they weren't in there. I've seen them go through the process of trying to live and then when they were gone, I was holding a body that didn't have a person in it. The soul went somewhere else. And so having had those experiences, right? We celebrate when somebody's born. We, 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 we see a child born, we go, oh my God, yes, thank you God. But we don't celebrate when somebody passes on and goes into a new uh, realm. And so uh, having these experiences has reminded me of what a gift it is, wait, one, to be there with somebody right before they pass into a different realm, and two, to recognize that, oh, I'm holding this body, but no one's in there. So they were never the body then. If they're not in there, then they were never that. That was just a vehicle for them to walk around and reflect and reveal the cosmos in a way that only they could. And so my dad died last year, same thing. I feel his energy around me all the time. I feel his, and my belief is that spirit, because it's no longer bound by body and time and relativity, can jump anywhere it wants to. So my dad probably is sitting in this room right now, smiling. Yeah, <laughs> yeah daddy, I feel you, Hello. wherever you're at. <laughs> so yeah, man, that's what I got. I feel you, you know, that's beautiful, man. You know, I always get emotional when I when I hear you in the book talking about her, you know, Alapindo, uh, because you know I have my eight year old daughter. She mm -hmm. was born with a genetic problem. It's not a cure for it. She's about seventy five percent healed. And you know, mm -hmm. imagine you know your spouse. Imagine you know um, Alexa like waking up every two minutes with the kids screaming and crying for years. You know, it took a huge toll on my wife, and then we were able to stop with the crying and the screaming. But you know, the genetic problem is still there. I spent hundreds of thousands, twenty plus doctors, and there are things in life yeah. that 
money, it doesn't buy. You guys know me. I'm an ambassador. I know all these billionaires. It doesn't matter. It doesn't mean nothing. I, I will give everything, all my millions, all my money, all my connections. I'll give everything, everything. Yep. For that little girl to be 100%. Yeah. Because you guys don't know what it goes down whenever behind closed doors. You feel me? It's like, it, it looks cool. That's why, you know what I mean? Whenever I spoke at the Oscars about a year or two ago, I rolled up on a pink bicycle and I had a sombrero and I had bread on my bicycle. And I rolled up in there because I wanted to speak life into those celebrities. You know what I mean? Yes. And, I, and, I, and I don't know. The money doesn't buy happiness. Yeah. It's how you treat people every day, how you treat your mate, how you treat your chauffeur, how you treat the lady that, that, that's serving you coffee at the local coffee shop. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's that gratitude that you have for just mm -hmm. by, by being alive yes. and, and for your health. I'm grateful for this health right now. And like yeah. he's saying over here, we celebrate everything, guys. Everything. Everything, every everything. minute. You guys heard me saying, live every day as you have one last day, not one more. Mm -hmm. And I'm just grateful for one more day, one yeah. more day. And, and the other day, somebody asked me a powerful question and when I was being interviewed. And that was the last question of the interview. And, you know, I, I, she was crying. And, you know, I told her my answer, you know, and uh, I'm going to, I want to ask you that question. Mm -hmm. And I want you guys to think about this as well at home when you guys are, because I ask questions to my guests that come over here periodically on my, on my podcast. You know, I want you guys to also you know, answer the questions at home. You know what I mean? Give yourself that gift because mm -hmm. writing is the doing part of thinking. It really helps, you know, writing and journaling, like kind of deal with, you know, with some of this, this hell. And, and, and imagine, you know, whenever you feel like you're freaking out and you're losing it and, it, you know, imagine Preston and Carlos right there on your right and on your left, you know, guiding you, you know what I mean? Firing you up. If Preston and Carlos will be here, what would they say? You feel me? Just literally, ladies and gentlemen. Remember, like I said, that's why I like to make this show so interactive, entertaining, and we want to transfer this like for, to your home so that you don't forget. I want this to be neurologically implanted in your nervous system. This yes. message here that my brother and I are sharing here because it's beautiful. You know what I mean? And he is the, the, the powerful question. You know that you are going to die soon, a couple of weeks or a few months from now. What is that one last thing that you love to do, Preston, before you go that is on your bucket list that you haven't done yet? Hmm. I know, she got me too. That's how I felt. I was like, oh. I was like, oh, shit. And then they kind of made me reflect. But take your time because I know that this is a very personal and, and powerful question. And that's why I saved this one for the less. And you guys at home, think about this. Let's say you got a couple of weeks or you have a few months to go. Let's put a few months in case if you needed to plan something. And what is that one thing on the bucket list that you love to do that you haven't done yet that could serve the world, your family, your the others, your kids? Mm. Yeah, that's a tricky one, man. Um, I know. I know. She got me big time. Yeah. Uh, well, it's, it's interesting because I don't entertain death in that way. Yes. Because I don't also believe in it per se. But yeah. if I knew, um, I would probably take my wife and kids to a place where the waves were good enough where I could go surfing with all of them. Because one of the visions that I have, and it shows up in my dreams sometimes, and it has before I, even, before I ever met my wife, this would show up in my, in my dreams. It's me, it's this, it's, and I get like glimpses of it, just little pieces. Um, I'm on a tropical island, we live there, I'm in the water, I have on yellow shorts, and I have a pot belly, um, and I have long gray dreadlocks. And my grandkids are all around me and I'm like throwing them up in the air and chasing them and splashing water. And then the, the, the like viewfinder sort of turns to the porch and I see somebody waving and then poof, it's gone. Right? Like I've been seeing that for 20 something years. Wow. And so um, I, there's a part of me that, that knows there's going to be a day and I forget about it all the time. And then I have these little moments and I'm like, woof, there it is again. And like, I would have never thought I would have had twins and a, and a, and a two, like I have three kids out of nowhere. 
right? In less than two years, I'm like, family just grew big, um, right? But like, it's Isn't happening. Isn't that crazy how it changes? No, <laughs> Boom. Right, and changes you. Um, so yeah, man, I think that that would probably be it. I've done a lot, I've lived a lot, and I, I, I will continue to. Um, yeah, I know that, brother, you know? And uh, um, no, and I know that's a crazy question too, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? So, and I know that sometimes based on people's beliefs, and, and, yep. and you know, that I know that you guys are always out there contributing, giving it back, and helping, and doing all those things. I'll tell you, I'll tell you my answer, and, mm -hmm. and which, you know, it's a crazy answer. And, you know, one of my dreams that I always dream, you know, that's um, there's a stadium in Brazil that they had to they tear it down that I wish they didn't before the World Cup and they rebuilt it called Maracanã in Rio de Janeiro. Before they tear it down, you could feel almost 200,000 people. there. So my audacious goal was, uh, um, you know, before was, you know, uh, being there with my best friends is speaking and having all the kids from the favelas, from the slums, anybody that was below poverty level lines to yep. come in and all of us, people like you and myself to come in and, and yep. just drop it. Yep. All we got as yep. if it would be like a paying client, a loved one or kids. And we are just giving it to them, empowering them, giving them a fair shot out of the hood. Mm -hmm. And But as I, as I start traveling international, that dream grow bigger. Mm -hmm. So one thing that I wanted to do, and, and you're going to actually, you know, I'm going to call all my brothers to, for us to do this together is now not only we're going to do in one stadium, I wanted to do it all the biggest stadiums throughout all the continents, yeah. you know, where I have you in Africa, me in Brazil, we got yeah. some brothers in Mexico, people in La Bombonera, Argentina, other yeah. folks, you know, it, 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 like, you know, in London and Barcelona and Japan, everywhere. And then what we'll do, we have all of us, all their yes. fossils and their dangers, why they're in all those stadiums, and yes. we will stream it live. And then only people allowed are kids from third world countries below poverty level lines. Yes. And we will just stream it live to the entire planet. If yes. I could go the next day, that will be my last speech. Yeah. With all of my brothers knowing that we are doing simultaneous, I know that it's crazy as hell, but. I'll Love somehow it. I will work it straight this and that uh, you're going to be one of the apostles that are going to be speaking at one of those stadiums. I'm Great. just putting it out there right now. You know what I mean? And I figured you wouldn't say no to your brother here because, you know, it's like, I always think about who would it be all the people, you know, all the people that I invite to my podcast, you know, the Frank Schenkens of the world, the Sharon Lecters of the world, you know, and all those amazing Liz Browns of the world. I always tell the brother, they stay healthy. We got to do the stadium, baby. Yeah. You know, and then, you know, the Tony Roberts, everybody, you know what I mean, brother? Yeah. But wow, guys, I'm just so happy. We're right here on the top of the hour. What an amazing show. And uh, um, brother Preston, where, they, where can they find you, my brother? Uh, um, what is the best place, you know, to reach out to you? My um, guys, like I say, you guys have me said it a few times, Love Louder. What a great book to <laughs> read, not only now during this pandemic time, but forever. I always tell you guys, right, you know, uh, the Bible and the work like immigrant right next mm. to your bed, have another one, Love mm. Louder. Some mm. lot of golden. If you guys enjoyed this, get ready for that book. I highly recommend getting the book. And the audio, super, super awesome. You know, yes. but where can they find you, my friend? How can they reach out to you the best way? You know, social media, website. Uh, let us know, my brother. Yeah, you can find me anywhere on the internet at Preston Smiles, uh, PrestonSmiles.com, at Preston Smiles. Um, and uh, yeah, if you're a coach or a facilitator, a light worker, anybody like that, KaboomCoaching.com. I help coaches make money and impact clarity, confidence, and cash flow. That's so cool, my brother. Let me look it over here and then uh, on Facebook and see uh, everybody over here is uh, loving it and answering. That's awesome. And uh, thank you, Facebook, so much. You guys rock. A lot of people engaging there. And then, uh, again, guys, you guys know the drill. Uh, Carlos Inspire Show, you guys know we don't charge for this. This is something that we're putting it out there. It's something that I want to live for this planet. And I bring all the apostles and the Avengers here. The way how we can get our message across so that more people can hear it is by you sharing. But I would challenge every single one of you right now listening to us, think about three people right now. When it's time to take massive action right now, never leave for tomorrow what you can do today. I want you guys to reach out to three people right now and tell them, listen to this. You know, If you're on social media, give them the link. 
If you want, you know, a podcast, just type in Carlos Inspire Show on Google, and it will pop up and everywhere on Apple and everywhere, Podbean, you name it. And then, you know, invite three other people to listen to this. This will be here. This was an anointed one, I'm telling you. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be listening to this and taking notes. And, and, and guys, you know the drill. You know what I mean? I bet you a couple of months from now, you guys want to see my brother again. I bet you he'll do it again. And, and we're going to keep it rolling. We're going to, it's together, like I say, by, by ourselves, you can go fast. But together, you know what I mean? We can go beyond what is impossible. You guys know the drill, ladies and gentlemen. I love you guys. You know, the days that break you are the days that make you. It's about to go down because Preston, Carlos Cicada, and you were here in the house. Have an outstanding day, beautiful people. <laughs> <laughs>